What's up guys? My name is Khan and we're back today in Scrap Mechanic and we're back with another really cool build that I think is just another awesome addition that we can have into the game and that is of course this fantastic camera. As you can see it is a perfect image of what we see behind it and that is of course us sitting in our seat. And you can see this camera is really really good, really accurate and I think just really allows us to do some crazy stuff in Scrap Mechanic. So you've probably already figured out how this actually works but in fact it does use the new mod pack and of course just some more of that number logic. So it uses two blocks in particular. It uses an RGB block and it uses this distance sensor block. Now this sensor is pretty much the same as a regular sensor except instead of giving it a distance it actually outputs what distance it is seeing. So as objects change distances in front of it it'll change its distance accordingly and if you hook that into an RGB block it'll actually detect objects depending on how far away they are and it'll actually change the color of the screen here depending on how far away they are now of course hooking them up straight just like this creates a really simple sort of blue image you can also hook them up with rgb like individual colors and then have it actually display different colors but if you just hook up a straight number you get an image that goes from black to white through the blue spectrum and uh, it's pretty pretty awesome but you can see a very low resolution image but it does update in real time. We can just drive, you can see, look at this, and just amazing. Of course, this is an extremely bulky camera, and if we wanted to attach this to a car to drive with, it would be extremely difficult to try and, you know, uh, mount your vehicle to it. I mean, you'd basically have to build your vehicle as a giant box and make sure that everything you want is within the vehicle. Otherwise, you'd never be able to navigate it through any passageways. And on top of that, the cameras aren't angled out at all, so you'd only really be able to navigate the vehicle through passageways that are the exact size of the vehicle. It would be very difficult to see what's beside you. You'd have no peripheral vision, really. It's just sort of like a straight image, but really cool if you want to do something like make an x-ray or like, you know, like a fake x-ray machine, I guess, or anything like that. But of course, I figure we got to do some math in between just the sensor and the RGB block. And if we do a little bit of math in between those, we can make a camera that can actually scan left and right and actually sort of look at more of a widescreen view of things, which allows us to mount it to a vehicle. And so that's what we've got set up over here on this awesome demo platform. Now, this is the basic sort of scanning camera and it's only possible because we've got this distance sensor as well as this stepper motor here. This is a new addition to the mod pack which basically allows you to give it a specific speed you want it to go at, a specific power you want it to go at, and a specific angle you want it to go to. And it's kind of like a, a really good controller. It's like an adjustable controller almost. Like a regular controller you have set angles and all that but this you can change what the set angle is just by changing the number it puts going into it. So it's got this white block here which is the speed of 50 50, and that's kind of the rotation speed and then it's also got this which is feeding it which angle it wants to go to and it's all hooked up through remote control of course because you know we had to had to make sure it was going to be compatible with a remote control bot now it does use a fair amount of routers it's got six routers there of course you can see so it's got five sending information and one receiving so it's only a five block high screen which gives you five pixels and then it's got uh, just a bunch of information being sent from the distances of each of those and then the information that it's receiving is what angle it needs to go at on the thing and then this whole circuit here hooked into this display actually gives us our image so you can see we've actually got some sort of barricade set up here and if we actually look this is actually picking up those barricades we've got this light moving across the top and really simply this entire circuit is calculating the math based on these sensor positions so it's adding each of the sensor values into these memory panels in behind which in turn is hooked into the display so it's really really simple stuff each memory panel holds a value that's given to it by each of the five sensors so really simply we've got this countering circuit set up here which you can see counts between negative seven and positive seven and multiplies it by four degrees so you get a total of negative 28 to positive 28 degrees of vision and that's just i don't know i i, I played around with a few different settings and that one seemed to be relatively good at, at giving you consistent distances. The distance when the sensor is straight looking at something versus if you rotate the sensor slightly, the distances will change and you can actually try this out if you want. You just take a, a sensor, put a wall right in front of it. The distance will change depending on what angle you're at, but luckily, you know, we have the math blocks now in this mod pack and that allows us to actually just take the cosine block and then multiply our angle inputs by the cosine block, which in turn will output the correct distance. So there's a little bit of a scaling that goes on, which means this is actually negative 30 looking out to the one direction, and this is positive 30 looking out in the other direction. So it's a weird kind of way to do it, but because of the cosine and the math blocks, this actually gives us a straight on view of everything. And so, you know, in case you guys are wondering, it of course doesn't update live, it updates on the scanner frequency. But if we remove that block, 
you can see it actually doesn't change anything here because that wasn't within the negative 30 degree window. So it's a little bit interesting when you mount it to a remote control vehicle, but it's really, really cool to have this sort of portable camera system, which of course, you know, I, I put it on a remote control robot. It had to happen. But if you guys don't believe me that it's a camera, we can in fact draw whatever we want here in the middle. And uh, we'll just make sure we're at the right height we are. So let's just put a slab here. And now if we go back, it should pick up the fact, yeah, it picked up the fact that we just put a slab down. And once it scans its way over, it'll see that that's fully connected, right? And then if we like, you know, cut some holes out of it, of course, we only have a five block height here. So let's just, let's just cut that smiley face out of it. And it, uh, it in fact picks up the whole smiley face. It's kind of weird because you're measuring 30 degrees out, but as the distance you're measuring increases, it's widening your field of view. It's almost like looking through a fisheye lens, which I, it's really hard to tell that this is kind of like a fisheye because obviously our resolution is, I mean, five by 15. So this is, you know, good old 15P. Now we've got the exact same camera set up here, although this platform has been slightly modified to incorporate that little robot over here. So this robot is the exact same as the camera before. You can see we have the five stacked cameras rotating on the front. We've also got this sort of push bar around the robot just to make sure the wheels don't, you know, ride up a wall, for example. Like if they drive into a wall and start riding up, that's a bad thing. So we've got a maze set up here if we zoom out. Uh, we should be able to see a it's basically just a circular path and we should be able to go in this one side and come out the other side completely fine just using these cameras and this terrible five pixel resolution display now of course this does use a fair amount of remote control blocks we've got uh seven of them now eight of them so all the remote control blocks are just different colors but they're all set on this one button and the same sense all the remote control blocks in the back here uh, same thing, just the different colors, but all on this one channel. So you could have more than one of these camera bots on the same map, of course. You could just change, see all the channels simultaneously if we wanted to. But we've got this one set to channel zero. Now, of course, this screen does get laggy. So you can see if we spawn a second one, it gets a little bit laggier just because of the number of scripts they have to run. And if we spawn a third, um, it's even laggier. But again, it's not that bad. It's it's still possible. I mean, you know, we're actually, it's actually still pretty good. That's better than it was before oh, you know what brent did an update and i think his update actually helped a little bit there we go it's getting a little bit laggy there okay so we've got four of them it's still not too bad we still got a bunch of frames uh you know that's that's still still pretty good so you can see it, it's get it gets a little bit worse but it's not too bad so you could have a bunch of your buddies you know all using camera drones at the same time as long as you're all on different frequencies, of course. Now, just like on the camera here, it's sending the same information. It's sending the degree positions to the stepper motor on this platform. And of course, we've got all the remote controls down there for the robot, and we can change them with these two buttons here as well. Now, the robot is extremely slow. The camera has to rotate back and forth, and you'll probably notice that the image only updates when this light goes above that particular column. Now, the reason that has to happen at the frequency of this ticking box here is because the camera and the memory and everything takes a second to actually write. So you've got to write it with a tick and you got to make sure you're writing it to the correct slot at the moment the camera's moved to the correct position. So everything kind of has to go a little bit slow to make sure the camera moves and then it writes the memory and then it goes and writes the next one and goes and so on and so forth. So it's really just giving the circuit time to calculate. Um, we could of course have multiple sensors, I guess, and scan in both directions, but regardless, it actually does basically each section in four ticks and then here we've got a 2 and a 50 and this is actually kind of like the brightness and the contrast to the screen so the 50 adds to whatever value is taken if it's too low then pretty much all the images are black because of the range so this kind of gives you additional brightness if you want to increase it for example you'll see all the pixels will basically start to get brighter and this is just us increasing the brightness of the screen overall. So now it's got a plus 100 on every value. So you can see it's still going to be the same distribution of colors as before, uh, but it's just going to be brighter than it was. So I'm going to bring that back down to 50. I kind of like it at 50. And then the two is sort of like your contrast on a screen. It's a multiplication factor on the initial value coming in. So every initial value coming in gets multiplied by two. And if you increase that, it'll multiply it by three, by four, by five. And the reason why that matters is like, if you have, let's say a distance of one block between two distances, they're not gonna display a different color because they're only one block off. But if you multiply that by, let's say 10, now all of a sudden they're 10 blocks off and it'll display a different color. So you can see as we increase this, 
the the variation just gets much different so we're just gonna it, it gets kind of weird if we go too high up we're just gonna keep it at two now i am gonna say that these are definitely prototype designs i originally was working on a bigger screen but it got really laggy with all the different memory blocks and stuff um so if you use smaller screens it generally works better and of course this is only picking up five blocks in height so it's five blocks in height and then the width is kind of a little bit weird again it's got that sort of fisheye effect but we can actually technically drive this robot through this entire course only looking at this camera and it should work now there's one final piece of information that we need to make this work and that's actually that little sort of pipe piece right there and using another stepper motor and another remote control block we're actually sending the compass information from that robot back to this location so if we rotate left and right you can see it'll actually point in the exact same direction that our robot is pointing and not just point in the same direction based on like timings and electric motors it's actually calculating that based on the compass position so if the robot gets stuck or something while you're holding like the left key and you don't see that rotating you can tell okay i'm actually stuck and it's not just a matter of you know i gotta wait so it's really really important to have that feature so you can tell when you're stuck up against a wall and when you're trying to give it commands now there is no forward and backwards one so you kind of just have to judge that based on the camera but if the whole camera goes dark you pretty much know that you're stuck up against a wall so we're going to try and navigate through this course really quickly uh using this this camera drone now you'll see it does move very very slowly that just kind of helps compensate for the fact that you have a laggy update time but we'll just enter the course here and uh now have a really entertaining rest of the video now the center of the camera is lined up with the center of the screen so straight in front of us here on this seat should be straightforward you can see it's getting darker which means we're getting closer to the wall now it gets to a really really dark blue color or black if you have zero brightness turned on. See that dark blue? That means we're like right up against a wall pretty much. Okay, so let's uh, let's start, try rotating. Now, of course, I know that the first corner is a right turn. So we're just going to rotate that. So you can see we've got that blue passageway. We'll just sit in this position, let the camera update. Okay, so the passageway is a little bit to the left. So let's just turn to the left a bit and then we'll drive forward it's you can see the passageway right there you kind of get this weird view and of course the camera does work up and down as well we've got you know those those degrees it's i think we're moving towards the passageway i think we're just close on the left side maybe turn a little bit to the right yeah this is this is looking better there perfect you can see we're definitely moving straight down this passage all right i think it's getting closer it's getting closer to the far wall We'll just straighten it out a little bit again that compass feature I, I tried doing this before without the compass and it was like impossible to navigate your way through uh okay so now we're gonna search so we know aiming straight there should be a wall straight in that direction of the pipe so let's rotate to the left 90 degrees and see if we see an opening or not oh there is one appearing so again while you're rotating you can't really trust the camera image because you know the camera is rotating at the same time so you kind of want to wait and sit and let the image settle so there we go you can tell there's definitely a passageway straight in front of us here so let's just keep moving straight and again this is a really entertaining episode guys we're just going to look at these blue pixels but i encourage you check it out download it from the workshop i'm not going to upload the base prototype but i'll upload this rc drone version of it but i encourage you try making your own little maze course and play around with the brightness settings and let me know what you think are good settings for it i found 2 and 50 is good but I bet you someone will find something a little bit better. But it's a really, really cool idea. And I really like the fact that we can start getting into actual visual cameras. Not just sensors and numbers, but actual cameras that are visual. So let's, uh, I think, rotating left. I think this is like all completely open in front of us. Oh, no, there is. There's a wall on the left there. Okay, we're facing. Let's rotate a bit to the right. Ooh, oh, okay. Okay, we're. I think we're right up against a wall on the right side. And then maybe a little bit on the left. Let's just rotate a little bit and go straight. I think this is... It's definitely opening up up here. It's really cool how you get the gradients when you get towards the edges of the walls. I really, really like how this all works. And I know a lot of you are going to say, well, you're not really seeing any difference up and down. And that's true. That's because it's only, again, we're looking at five blocks and we've got these really high, you know, 16 block walls. So it, we're not really going to see that that difference but if you try and ride it over terrain it is going to show you all the different colors and all the different bumps and every little rock that it's picking up and everything else and it's very very difficult to navigate uh mainly because this is an extremely extremely low resolution camera we're just gonna keep going straight okay so dark so that means we're getting close to the wall um i think i don't remember if it's uh, let's turn left and see if there's an opening what's to the left it gets a little bit... No, it's still dark there. You can see it's still... Let's just keep... Okay, so we, we were coming... This is going backwards. So it's going to be bright here. But that that's the way we came. We don't want to go that way. So let's rotate north. Okay, is there another... There's got to be another opening up here. Yeah, it's right there. So that's the opening we want to get to. Okay, so... 
Let's go. Are we lined up straight? All right, perfect. Open, open, open. Excellent. All right, let's go straight here. So we can see we're going towards that narrow passageway now. This is like worse than playing Doom on an old computer. This is, this is how good this resolution is. You can see the refresh rate of our screen is fantastic. Now, of course, we could do this with a single sensor and have it move both up and down and left and right. But then the refresh rate would be even slower. So uh, just going to go straight until we get to that dark blue section. Yeah, so we're definitely getting to the end of this passageway. Okay, yeah, so let's uh, rotate, I think, left. Is it left on this last pass? I don't remember what the directions are. Oh, there's an opening to the left for sure. Okay, uh, maybe a little bit right. Let's go a little bit to the right and go straight. Now, when it gets to a uniform color on the screen, that basically means that your robot is so close to an object that it's only seeing that object, right? So that's kind of how you have to interpret it. Again, it's like looking through a weird sort of fisheye lens. So we're completely dark on the screen now. Um, so let's find another passageway. Let's go to the left here. We just came from the left side. Okay, so that's there is that's the opening we need to get to. Where is that? Oh, it's straight. Perfect. Let's go straight here. Just keep navigating our way. Again, would be completely impossible without the compass. Because without the compass, you have to hold left and hold right. And you don't really know, you know, which direction you're facing compared to which direction you were facing. So having that compass really gives you the ability to navigate. Even, you know, I obviously have built this course, but I think even if you built a more complicated course with that compass, you could definitely find your way through the passages. You just got to remember which direction you were going in and then try and find the passageway that goes out. Okay, so let's look for the passageway. It's obviously to the left because, you know, we can see that. So let's, uh, let's do this. This is perfect. This is, no, nope, that's still dark. Oh, wait, but it's bright there. Hold on. Do we rotate right? How do we... There's got to be an... Oh, this is hard because there's not a lot of contrast here. Let's... You know what? Let's increase the contrast to times three. Is that... That doesn't... That didn't really help me much. It just... Okay, well, it's definitely open more to the right. That's for sure. Okay, yeah. And then there's a wall there on the left. Okay, do we rotate a little bit more to the right? 45 degrees. Okay, no, so it's, see, there's the passageway is definitely there. There's definitely a wall and a wall. Yeah, so there's the passageway. I think we're kind of right in the middle of it. Let's just go straight a bit. Okay, everything's uniform. Okay, I think the passageway is more to the right. I think we're, we're seeing our way out from, like, the entire maze, I think is what's happening here. Yeah, that, see, because that weird terrain stuff with the black blip and stuff, that's, like, hills and stuff, I think, in the distance of the terrain. Um... I think that's where we need to go. Let's let's go straight. The terrain looks really, really weird. I'm not sure if there's a max limit on the sensor or not. I, I don't know. I'd have to ask Brent about that one. Oh, here we go. Look at that. Perfect. Navigating our way through that entire course using nothing but this terrible camera system. And then you can see our extremely awesome low resolution image of the terrain out behind us. But of course, I will upload this combination to the workshop. It's really, really simple stuff. I'll attach the two together and upload it as one creation. But I encourage you guys, download it, try and build your own mazes, and try and navigate your way through it. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Let me know if you have any suggestions on how to improve it. Obviously, scaling up the resolution would be the best thing to do, having more pixels. Of course, there is a limitation with the number of scripts. You can see we've got a lot of memory in behind there. But we could scale up the number of pixels and then just change the angle between each one. But of course, let me know what you think in the comments down below. And while you're at it, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And we'll see y'all next time.